What's going on guys? Etika from the Etika World Network here and we all got blown the fuck back last week. The 15th was the final Smash announcement and a lot of us in somewhat more of a positive way than others but either way I needed some time to get all this information together and to give you my thoughts on the whole thing and before we get any further I know your boy needs a goddamn haircut. I'm looking like Scruff McGruff right now but don't worry I'll get cleaned up for you niggas eventually but Anyways, in terms of the information, I thought the best way to present it would be a top five. So today we are going to be going through the top five wins and disappointments of the final Smash announcement. And I don't feel like I need to reiterate this for these kinds of videos, but just for some of you guys out there, this is my own personal opinion and I'm not forcing you to agree with me. And in fact, if you do disagree with me, I would love to see your opinion in the comments below. Or even if you want to take it a step further, you could also make a video yourself and send it to me at ewnetwork2 at gmail.com upload it to YouTube or whatever. While this will have my own personal bias in it, at the same time, I'm gonna do my best to try to represent the wins and the disappointments in a way that a lot of you guys can compare with. So, just so you know. Also, I got my fucking window open. So if there's any fire trucks or fucking, fucking police officers or mugging going on, you're going to hear it in full detail. That's the consequence of living in New York City. You're gonna experience the city with me during this video. Let's get into it. Coming in at number five on the win side is the presentation and the look and the feel of the final announcement. The layout was great in terms of Corrin and Kamui coming out first, then the Mii costumes, and then Bayonetta after. If they changed up the order and did Bayonetta first and Corrin after, there would have been a lot more angry people out there, although there's plenty of them as it is right now, so I guess there was no way you could truly avoid that, but I feel like they minimized the damage with Kamui coming first. Bayonetta, definitely more of a unified, happy announcement for some people. In terms of the way that they laid out the presentation, really cool. It had kind of an upbeat farewell feeling to it, and the way that they described all the information and the statistics of the game, like the number of characters, number of stages, music, costumes, that was great. And it truly did give it that final farewell feel. One other thing about it, and this is one of my favorite things, is the roster skit video at the end. You know, the one, the one where they had all the funny little shenanigans going on with all the characters? I love those. And the fact that we didn't get so many of them with Smash 4 kind of was sad. A lot of the characters didn't have those videos, and I, I, I grew up with Melee, so experiencing those skits in that game with the characters was really fun. And that we didn't get something like that in Smash 4, it's a little bit disappointing, but it's all good at the end of the day. I just wish there were more of them, because Sakurai is always great at making those funny skit videos, so to see more of them in the future would be awesome, but whatever. Either way, I feel like it was definitely fitting for a final presentation setup. Yeah. Number five on the disappointment side of things is definitely the Smash Ballot. I would have liked to see the top five in each region revealed to us. I'm not sure why it wasn't, but one good guess I have is that maybe it would be a little bit controversial, because what if somebody like Banjo was at the top number one, but he didn't want to make that happen over Bayonetta? There'd be a lot of angry people, so maybe, hopefully in the future we can get maybe a Famitsu interview from him, and then he'll reveal the final characters for the ballot, but Right now, a lot of people are still wondering. There's even some kind of controversy, um, maybe even some kind of uh, deception going on with the whole thing, but we're not gonna get too in de detail about that. A lot of people are wondering, what did the top five look like? In America, we know that Bayonetta was in the top five, but she didn't necessarily win it. In Europe, she won it, so we'll see. But I guarantee you at least one of those top five in the United States was fucking Goku or Shrek. I'm putting my money on it, man. Eventually in the future, we'll find out, hopefully, if Sakurai reveals it, but for now, it's all a mystery, and I don't know why it was so shush-shush who the top guys were, but whatever. Coming in at number four on the win side is Cloud. Now, he was revealed after the announcement, and even though a lot of us did expect that, and we all speculated it, basically, because we waited a long time to get to the announcement in the first place, he was revealed after the fact, and that was awesome. It's great to see an announcement and then finally get the character that we've been thinking about and seeing really good feeling and on top of everything else he's actually a really good character his moves come out relatively quick his recovery a little bit ass but a lot of the things that he has in terms of his strengths are really good like his limit break for example when you're in that state you're a lot faster well you're not a lot faster but you're definitely faster you have more attack power more knockback it's great and um cloud in general is just a really cool character to have in smash brothers man his forward air i love the little spike hitbox that it has at the end that, that, that shit is fun to play with, I'll tell you that much. Also, it seems like a lot of his moves don't really have too much end lag. Plus, his aerials are really good too. His neutral air is great for mix-ups and hitting people from behind, when they usually roll behind you. And not to mention his up air, deadly as hell. His dash attack, 
really his dive attack is decent but his his down tilt to me is one of the most fun moves to use with him overall cloud is a great character and to add on top of that there was no server bottleneck when he was released um, after the broadcast they said it would take an hour or two and then cloud would be available to everyone and when that happened there was no major server shutdown um, everything was smooth and I love it Nintendo was definitely prepared for the demand and ready their servers for how many people would be downloading him at the same time and it was great to see that everything went smooth with him um, at least to my knowledge it didn't really seem like there was a huge shutdown like with previous DLC patches and I'm glad about that. In terms of number four on disappointments, it would have to be the 1.1.3 patch. Now when it comes to characters being OP in the game, I feel as if it's always better to raise up the lower characters to a higher place than to nerf the top characters. Except for extreme situations like um, the hoo-ha or Sonic's back throw at the ledge. Other than those situations specifically, I feel like it's always better to give everyone else a boost. We did see a lot of characters in this patch, this final patch apparently, get a buff, but it wasn't necessarily in the right places. Like for instance, my main, Robin, she got a lot of great buffs, but nothing in terms of what actually holds her back as a character placing higher in tournaments. Her movement speed, not a single movement speed buff, and I'm not sure exactly what their reasoning was for giving her certain buffs in certain areas, but not the most critical ones. And then we look at other characters like Mewtwo for instance, he got a great movement speed buff, but nothing to address his horrible weight class in terms of how light he is and his floatiness as a character. And those things combined with his size, uh, Mewtwo's not really too viable when you get to the higher tiers. Um, and then another character as well too, we got Shulk. A lot of damage buffs, but nothing to address his end frame lag on a lot of his moves. And it's weird. The logic behind some of these buffs and changes in the characters are definitely baffling. Me and Zero, we talked about this ourselves. The, we want to know exactly what the reasoning was for giving certain buffs to a character, but not other ones to other characters and not nerfing certain characters. It's kind of strange. And even Zero himself, who was close to Sakurai at one point, Sakurai specifically told him, I ain't telling you shit about any of these characters or any of these patches. So all we can do is wonder what the reasoning and logic is behind some of these moves. But I feel like one major con was that a lot of the characters that needed certain buffs didn't get them, but got other buffs in other areas. So whatever. Another con I definitely have to talk about is Cloud's DLC. And I mentioned everything before that was good about it, but what's bad about it is that we got such a lacking amount of music selection in his stage, Midgar. Why the hell are there only two songs available from a game that has one of the most dynamic soundtracks in the world? Not even One Winged Angel is on the goddamn soundtrack. Even if you didn't make a remix, you could have at least given us some more of a selection here. It's a little bit strange to me. Two songs for a Smash Brothers Wii U stage. What the hell is the purpose of that? Then let's also talk about his palette swaps. A lot more limited than I thought that they would be. Um, a lot of them are the darker colors and they only change in tone slightly. I'm not sure what the logic and reasoning was behind this, although we do have his Avin children costume, which is a plus, but why are the colors so dulled down? I'm thinking maybe the DLC selection, or not even, you know, not even the trophies, man. We don't even get trophies of the truly iconic characters. I'm not sure what's going on here. No Sephiroth trophy, but I mean, I'm guessing there was a lot of red tape in terms of what Square Enix allowed Sakurai to do, so... All we can do is wonder as to why we didn't get more of a robust DLC experience with him. But overall, him as a character, great. But those are the cons for number four. All right, so number three on the list of wins is Fire Emblem. And I already know there's going to be a lot of controversy with this one that I made. Um, a lot of you are going to make jokes on me saying that this is a Fire Emblem ad video, but not necessarily. Fire Emblem Fates comes out in February. And if you have not made plans to purchase that game by now, then you need to reconsider that. I already know the arguments that a lot of people have online. I see it on Twitter all the time. I don't want another Fire Emblem character. I don't want another sword using character. And I definitely don't want another anime character, although the game is Japanese. So, I mean, what can you expect in that sense? But still, we see this all the time. However, what I want to explain to you guys is that even though Fire Emblem to some of you may be overrepresented, at the same time, it has six reps for a reason. This is all coming from somebody that only played Fire Emblem after discovering Robin in the Smash Brothers trailer. And back then, I didn't know shit about the series, uh, much less Robin and Lucina. I mean, take a look at this. Who is that? Who the fuck? Who is that? Who the hell is that? Robin? Who the fuck are these people? Who the hell is this guy? Are they, are they from Fire Emblem? What? This is no time for me to rest. I don't know who the hell he is, but he looks I'll better. As you can see, I was clueless about Robin, but after seeing the trailer, a lot of people suggested for me to try out the demo on the eShop. After I tried it, I couldn't put the fucking game down. Now, of course, I know. I haven't played it in a little while, so there's gonna be plenty of jokes about that in the comments too. But 
The game is amazing, and as soon as you pick it up, you're not going to be able to put that bitch down. And this is all coming from a game that was on its deathbed. Fire Emblem was going to be canceled after Awakening. They didn't see the game doing too well in terms of sales numbers, and it was going to be canned, put away, kind of like Advance Wars was. But the craziest thing happened, and this is why I like to refer to Fire Emblem as Nintendo's Phoenix, because Awakening saved the series um, and sold almost 2 million copies worldwide. Consider how insane it must have been on Nintendo's end to see a series that's about to be put away suddenly explode and people all across the world buying it. It's kind of strange, but it's amazing. It shows you that Fire Emblem Awakening truly did discover a sweet spot within itself. I mean, almost anybody that's played Fire Emblem Awakening at this point can definitely agree that it is loved. Even the hardcore Fire Emblem fans who have been playing the games beforehand, some of them don't like the whole waifu, the waifu integration with the game, but they all agree that it's a solid game nonetheless. And considering that the game was on death's door, it's amazing that it now made a return like this. And I feel as if the six representatives of the game are definitely well warranted in Smash Brothers. I mean, if we take a look back, Melee had two Fire Emblem reps, Brawl had two Fire Emblem reps, and Smash 4 has six. Around the time when Brawl came out, Fire Emblem was about to be put away. But then, suddenly, the experience of Fire Emblem, the series, blew up when Awakening came out. So, with all this taken into consideration, even though some of you may criticize it, I guarantee you, if a lot of you guys play the game and actually give it a chance or maybe play the demo of Awakening, you'll see why the game has so many reps. Nintendo knows it's a damn good game. They know for a fact now that if you pick it up, you're going to fall in love with it. And even if it's not a game that you would consider the kind that you play, a strategy RPG, at the same time, you need to try out something new. I'm, I'm asking you this on behalf of me. If you want to do your boy a favor, try out Fire Emblem Awakening. Go to the eShop and download the demo, because if you haven't played Fire Emblem by now, then all you're doing is hurting yourself. Now, can it be arguably said that maybe Fire Emblem doesn't deserve as much of a chance as some of the older Nintendo games? Possibly. But what does Fire Emblem have that a lot of those games don't? Fire Emblem was dead, and then it came back from the dead, and stronger than ever. That's insane. Not a lot of series can say the same thing for themselves. So, whenever you're questioning Fire Emblem now in the future, just understand that the game is damn good and you need to play it. And then give your opinion on what you think should be the amount of representatives in Smash 4. I'm just saying. Number three on the list of disappointments is, funnily enough, Fire Emblem. Now, Marth has two clones made after him, Roy and Lucina. And the only other character that has that same treatment is Mario with Dr. Mario and Luigi. It's a little bit... Maybe excessive, I suppose, but the way that I perceive things is when a character is implemented into Smash Brothers, that doesn't mean that they took a slot from another character. And the way that Lucina was implemented was the, scene, the team saw themselves as having a little bit more development time, so they basically changed up Marth a little bit and added in Lucina. So that's the way that it happened. It's not like Lucina took that slot from someone like K. Rule or whatever. I don't feel as if Corin or Lucina took character slots from other people's favorite characters, but rather Sakurai decided to put those guys in and not to put in those favorite characters. I will never be somebody that says that I'm pissed off at new characters getting in, but I can definitely understand where some people are coming from in terms of how they feel certain characters deserve to be in the game more than Kamui. Is Kamui truly deserving to be in Smash Brothers? I can understand why they put her in due to the Fire Emblem hype and potentially getting more people playing the game because it's killing it in numbers right now, but there was a reason why Sakurai didn't decide to put in favorite characters or characters that felt like they were more deserving. And that's where we truly need to be wondering here. Kamui is not where we should direct our anger, but we should be directing our curiosity, rather, to Sakurai. Um, potentially maybe asking him on Twitter why a certain character wasn't put in, and maybe we can put enough pressure on him to where he can actually give us an explanation. Like with Ridley. I, I will agree, Fire Emblem has a lot of representatives, and maybe we would have loved to see other characters put in the game as well, too. Those Fire Emblem characters required development time. Six of them? Yeah, they required a lot of development time. Why is it that Sakurai decided to give more development time to those Fire Emblem characters rather than to demanded characters that represent Nintendo's previous history? It's a mystery to us, but there's a reason why he didn't give those desired characters that development time. That's what we need to wonder with the whole thing, but I, can, I get it, I get it. Fire Emblem has a lot of reps, and if you haven't played a Fire Emblem game by now, it seems excessive to you, and I understand. Hell, even if you have played a Fire Emblem game, it might still seem excessive to you. Number two on the wins is the new Umbra Clock Tower stage that we got for DLC. And the great thing about it is that it seems like it's legal. Now, when we saw the angels in the background, 
That kind of made me wonder, maybe there's going to be some interference from these background entities, but it didn't seem like they would attack you. They just come by, look at what you're doing, and then leave. So it might be legal. Now, some of the platforms, apparently when you get hit on them, they were solid. So I'm not sure if that would be something that would be allowed in tournament play. Maybe not, considering that people could bounce off and you could just get a chance to combo up more on, it, on certain characters. I don't think that's something that's allowed in tournaments, but we'll have to see in the future. And if the background entities interfere at all, then it has a really good chance of being banned. But the stage looks awesome, the music is great, looking at things from a non-competitive standpoint, the visuals are amazing, and the fact that we could potentially be getting a playable stage for tournaments is rare. So I'm excited about the prospect of the Umbra Clock Tower. I've never played Bayonetta myself, but the stage looks orgasmic. And it's a great addition to Smash Brothers. I can't wait to play on it. Oh, and another thing that also helps it seem more legal is that it's totally flat. So we kind of got an FD thing going on with platforms that constantly flow through. I'm hoping that it's legal. Number two on the disappointment side of things, however, is that a lot of the most desired newcomers for Smash Brothers didn't get in. I, you know what I'm talking about here, man. Them King K rules, them Isaacs. What the hell happened? There's so much fan demand for these guys to be in the game, and they represent significant parts of Nintendo's history. And by the way, ignore the fire side, you know, the fire engines and the police sirens, man. Somebody robbed something. A lot of these characters that have so much push in terms of, oh my god! How many niggas are gonna be burning in fires today? This is one of the most confusing parts of Sakurai. Sometimes he can seem like he's a predictable guy, but a lot of times he hits you from left field. You have no idea as to what his reasoning was. If you really want to get big in terms of fan demanded characters, Banjo Kazooie. We can see that Sakurai breaks barriers in terms of characters that he can get access to, he can get his hands on in terms of Cloud and Square Enix. But Microsoft and Banjo, what happened there? Every time I come up with a formula as to why or how a certain character gets into Smash Brothers, there's something else that Sakurai does somewhere else that totally this totally contradicts that formula. The crazy part about this is that a lot of these fan desired characters do come from Nintendo games and are a significant part of them. Like King K. Rool, for instance, one of the biggest antagonists in Donkey Kong. For some reason, he's not in the game. Uh, Inklings were also a big desired character. They showed up as me costumes, but they were not in the game. We can only imagine what the logic is on putting some of these characters in and leaving some of them out. Banjo being left out, another strange choice considering he's a lot of people's childhood. I don't understand it myself, man. But then we have Duck Hunt in the game. Like, like, I mean, you, you get where I'm coming from, right? But then we have newer characters like Kamui getting in, and I can understand where people's anger comes in the field, because these characters were desired for years, but then somebody brand new was able to get on the scene with no problem. It, it's weird. And finally, for number one in terms of the wins, is definitely Bayonetta. This is a character which a lot of people thought would be impossible, including me and Alpha Rad. I mean, we talked about this in our interview before, for God's sake. If I had to pick one character, it's Bayonetta. I said this. Bayonetta, not gonna happen, and I know that. Like, you're Ridley. It's not gonna happen. I know, but I mean, Bayonetta kinda has a better chance. She's not too big. Well, in some areas, at least, She's you know? So, I mean, like, yeah, yeah. She, like, and plus, they put Snake in before. They yeah. did, but it's like, it, it's different. It's just violence versus, look at all this nudity. She's too sexy, right? She's too bad for Smash. But no, nah, Sakurai somehow managed to tone down her outfits just a little bit, enough to be able to get into Smash Brothers and keep the rating at an E10. Props. Big ass props to Daddy Sakurai, because this is a move that everyone thought would not happen. In terms of the competitive side of things, we don't have her in our hands just yet. We can see from the video that she has a lot of options. Her combo potential is probably one of the best out of any of the characters in Smash Brothers. Uh, a lot of the combos and the follow-ups that she has look pretty damn OP. And I agree with everybody when they say that that goddamn witch, witch time slowdown thing is fucking through the roof, man. Her afterburner kick in the air, the double witch twist, she has a lot of options, and that is something that definitely helps when it comes to how viable a character can be. Plus, let's look at the top tier characters in Smash as it is. What do they all share in common? They're female, they're sleek, they're quick. Diddy Kong, rather, don't fit all those specifications, but hey, close enough, right? Bayonetta looks like she fits the exact same mold as would be a Sheik character or a Zero Suit Samus character. So, I mean, Big props there. She's definitely going to be top tier. Most likely will be, um, aside from her horrible frame data whenever she lands. But I mean, I feel like her, all those cons will be made up for by her amazing combo potential. And let's not forget that she actually won the ballot, and her game is actually really good too. 
I looked up Bayonetta 2 scores and across the board they're almost all perfect from all reviewers. That is a huge plus, which means that the game itself is a must play for everyone watching this video right now. I didn't play Bayonetta myself, but I definitely will be in the future. Considering how amazing the scores are, it looks like you can't get into Smash Brothers now without playing Bayonetta. And that's one great thing, that she is included in the game and it puts a lot of highlight on her own series, which is doing really well. So. There's a lot of great things for the future with Bayonetta in Smash. In terms of disappointments, this one kind of falls in line with number two, but number one is no veterans for the final DLC patch. I don't know what the hell the logic was. And like I said before, I try to come up with formulas on this shit, but they always get contradicted by something. The fact that we did not get Wolf implemented is mind blowing. Everyone pretty much knew, guaranteed Wolf was making a return. How could he not? We had returning vets like Dr. Mario, or even Brawl exclusive vets like Lucas come through. You know, we had Roy come through for Melee for God's sakes, but not Wolf, who had one of the most unique movesets of any clone character in Smash Brothers. Not even really being able to be called a clone per se, because he had a lot of variation in his moves. He didn't make an appearance. This is one of the strangest attributes of the final Smash Brothers DLC. The fact that none of these vets that were truly wanted came back. There's so much disappointment across the board, and to be honest with you guys, I can't disagree with it. The fact that we got newcomers, I love it, and I would never say that a newcomer took a slot from a character to make a return. But for Sakurai to decide I'm not going to put Wolf in the game, I don't understand the logic behind that. And I don't think that Kamui or Bayonetta took Wolf's spot. I don't think that these characters disabled certain characters from getting in the game. I expressed that before. But there's a reason why Sakurai said, I am not going to include Wolf in the game. I'm not going to include uh, King K. Rule in the game. There, there's a difference between the two. Wolf's a vet, King K is a newcomer. But a veteran, you feel like, would have an easy access pass to get into the game for free after the fact, considering that they're most desired. Ice Climbers, we know, couldn't get in because of tech specifications. But Wolf is a strange scenario. And to be honest with you, I think there will always be a little bit of allure and mystery as to why he didn't make the cut for the game second time around. He's an antagonist, unique moveset, really cool character on top of it all, and he didn't make an appearance, although a lot of other veterans did. I don't get it myself, man. I can understand why everyone's disappointed. I don't disagree with you all in the slightest. If we're talking about vets, Snake not making an appearance as well is a strange situation. I don't get that either. I suppose maybe Snake not making an appearance was due to licensing issues, but Wolf is just the strangest scenario out of it all. Maybe he just doesn't have a presence in future Star Fox games, and that's why he's not in the game, but I'm just pulling reasons out my ass. Don't quote me on those. It'll, he'll be missed as a character, big time. You know, I didn't, I didn't use him too much back then, but I love the variation in his moves, and in terms of Fox Falco and Wolf, Wolf would be my first choice pick any day of the week. Him not showing up is sad. Rest in peace. But anyways, guys, so that was my top five wins and disappointments of the Smash Brothers final announcement. Did you agree with me? Did I have my thoughts well, well organized for that whole thing? Usually a lot of times when it comes to these top fives, I like to go scripted, but then it sounds so fake and rehearsed on camera. And so that way is a little bit too much for me. Like I usually like going at it raw dog. So I only have a couple of notes and then bam, I go at it. I just talk out my ass. But anyways, dudes, what do you think? Do you agree with a lot of the points that I made? And what's your perspective on the whole Kamui issue with her being in Smash Brothers. Do you feel as if her inclusion did take away from some of your characters? Or do you feel like it's great to have a unique newcomer coming to the table and we should all rather be questioning why Sakurai didn't implement the most desired fan characters or the veterans that should have made a return but didn't? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments and I'll talk to you in the next video. Take care of yourselves and of course as usual, please have yourself a damn good one.